So now this is where um, I think we really we really come up against the critical um, issue that underlies the tongue tie epidemic. Mm -hmm. And that is that um, clinical breastfeeding support has not been a research priority. So we have had 50 or 60 years now of investment in research about the nature um, of human milk and why human milk is best for human babies. This has been very important, um, but unfortunately, there's not yet been the research investment that's required in clinical breastfeeding support, how we get that wonderful human milk directly into the bubby's gut in a way that's pain-free mm -hmm. and efficient, mm -hmm. in a way that's workable for that mother and baby. So this is actually a frontier. Right. This is pioneering, and mm -hmm. I would argue it's because of this frontier mm -hmm. and the difficulty we have actually offering mothers and babies tools that really help yeah. with their breastfeeding problems mm -hmm. that we think you know only because we care so much we think well maybe it is the oral connective tissues mm -hmm. and of course there is that whole history of tending to look for simplistic structural problems linear ca causal absolutely um, snip uh, or laser or or fix that's it that's it and of course we know from the research that it's typically not all fixed mm -hmm. that it's not helping our breastfeeding mother baby cares um, and of course from 2005 all the research that's been conducted really has been very confused around definitions of tongue tie has significant methodological weaknesses uh, um, it's possible that it's both overestimating the benefits of um, phrenotomy um, for the posterior tongue ties and upper lip ties at the same time as we're underestimating benefits for classic tongue ties. Overall, our Cochrane review, for instance, that mm -hmm. came out almost two years ago now and a couple of other big systematic reviews are showing no really convincing evidence of benefits for phrenotomies. So, Kim, you mentioned there, and I just want to go back because I yeah. think this is important, the, the lip tie, uh, that we can demonstrate that that upper lip moves beautifully, uh, universally, even if there is a strong frenulum that goes right down to the gum and maybe even tucks a little under. Um, but lip tie is one of the things that women present to me having already had mm. babies having it divided. So is lip tie not a thing? It's actually not. Um, a meaningful diagnosis in any way. So the Australian Collaboration of Infant Oral Research mm -hmm. published um, a position statement on um, these diagnoses of upper lip tie and indeed buccal tie in 2017. And we showed through a careful analysis of existing evidence mm -hmm. and also expert opinion across um, multiple uh, university sites that um, the diagnosis of an upper lip tie is uh, meaningless um, because we're really looking at a whole range of normal um, anatomic diversity. But worse than that, brings potential risks if mm -hmm. there's a phrenotomy performed. What sort of risks? Uh, there's, there's a risk of bleeding, actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a risk of infection. Right. Um, is that just with the scissors or is that with laser as well? Laser, of course, um, better controls the bleeding mm -hmm. and it's why the dentists preference it. They mm -hmm. can actually um, perform more invasive surgery but, but ensure hemostasis. Now, labial frenulum phrenotomy increases that baby's risk of um, scarring and diastema between the incisors down the track. Now, this what is, is a diastema for those so who a, don't know? A separation between the two front teeth. Oh, like that thing Madonna has? Mm -hmm. So the gap between the teeth, I thought that was something that the phrenotomy was supposed to fix. And this is what parents are being told, mm -hmm. but it's misinformation because these babies are being subjected to increased risk of scarring, which leads to um, an increased risk of diastema or okay. that separation between the teeth. So we should leave the lip alone? There's absolutely no role for a phrenotomy and the of the labial frenulum. And the stuff that Absolutely no to role get that. for um, surgery. The classic tie where maybe we're 
and it's not the figure, but it's it is tethering that tongue. So a clinical judgment. The posterior tie. Yes. It's sorry, posterior where? This is a very good question. The, the new work by Dr. Nikki Mills, an ear, nose and throat specialist from the Starship Children's Hospital in Auckland, Auckland. Um, and an anatomist, shows that there's a complete misconception around the anatomy of the lingual frenulum. Mm -hmm. It's often described as a cord or a mast, you know, as a discrete um, length of tissue. But in fact, it belongs to um, floor of mouth um, fascia that's suspended um, from the arcs of the mandible and connects to um, the base of the tongue, the undersurface of the tongue. And when the tongue is elevated, then there's naturally tension placed on this spread, like this fan-like spread of floor of mouth oral fascia. And it's the tension of the tongue um, elevating that actually exposes what looks like a cord or a band, but is actually just the tenting of this structure, which is a contiguous um, piece of fascia. So there's a great deal of misconception actually around the idea of a lingual frenulum and the idea that, that somehow in severing that, um, we're actually um, releasing a discrete piece of connective tissue. So when we're looking at an anterior membrane, it's typically low in um, vasculature and we mm -hmm. assume low in um, nerves, doesn't mm -hmm. have much in the way of mem when, What I'm referring to as an anterior membrane is a translucent piece of um, variably elastic tissue that really does seem to run along the undersurface of the tongue. That's 20%, 50%, mm -hmm. perhaps to the tip. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an anterior membrane and sometimes we might cross over into thinking clinically it's restricting the mobility of the tongue. It truly is a classic tongue tie, let's snip it. But many of us will feel prominence, if you like, under the tongue. So help me with my nerve. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll do my best. Here you go. All right, so, uh-huh, uh, uh, uh. Lingual frenulum, okay. what we call a lingual frenulum. All right. But uh, it's uh -huh. really a... And so they're going in, because when I think classic tongue tie, I think, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Like it's more than what I've got out. Yeah, yeah. And so you're going in and under the tongue. Yes, And that's snipping right. that off so that it goes back to closer to what I've got, because I'm normal. <laughs> that's it. Or just that's enough it. to release that tongue. That's it. Yes, okay. But with the posterior tongue tie. So they'd want to cut that deeply, diamond-shaped uh -huh. wound. And um, so it's a diamond shaped wound because you're cutting into a tenting thing, so it it, it opens up, or they yeah, cut a yeah. diamond shape. No, they no, cut it's because across. you're cutting into some yes, tenting, the tenting, yes. and it opens. So that leaves a raw area under the base of the tongue. Yes, quite a quite a large area. Now, of course, the fact is that this scars up, and this is one of the side effects. There's a number of um, risks associated with, um, in particular, this deep laser phrenotomy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is one of the things that, because it messes with my head, like what on earth are they talking about? Because I look underneath and I go, that's mm. normal. Mm. Because it is. It is. Yes, but we're calling normal abnormal. Yes. And But we, we weren't calling abnormal abnormal. And so it's that mix and that's part of the problem that we have. Yes, yes. Oh, <sighs> I think in summary, when we're talking posterior tongue tie, we're talking a diagnosis that um, labels normal anatomic variants as abnormal, inviting intervention that doesn't help breastfeeding outcomes, doesn't improve outcomes um, in terms of speech or orthodontic development. We Indeed. have research on that. I mean, that's not just you picking that out of your head. What we, we know from the research is that breastfeeding itself improves orthodontic outcomes. So that's been nicely established mm -hmm. actually in a systematic review of studies. Um, however, advocates of phrenotomy for blurred diagnoses around tongue tie or posterior tongue tie um, are claiming that therefore an intervention of a phrenotomy will improve orthodontic development. So we've seen this link between 
breastfeeding and improved orthodontic development. And then the assumption that a phrenotomy for these diagnoses will inevitably improve breastfeeding and therefore improve orthodontic development. But of course, this is, this an, is an assumption um, which in fact doesn't make sense from a physiological point of view, actually. Are there, so, the classic tongue tie, where you have that um, sort of extra bit of membrane that extends underneath the tongue and close to the tip, uh, that tethers that tongue so that it has difficulty reaching out and, and does the little heart shape. Um, that is different to a point where you lift the tongue up, what you were saying about the tenting, uh, and that giving the impression that at that point there's a pullback on the tongue. So that is cut or lasered into that tense, tented tissue, creating then, once that's cut, then you get the diamond shaped wound. Um, will that reattach? Is that a raw area that's just going to reattach? Because I hear parents say that they've got to do exercises to stop it reattaching. And I have a whole lot of concern about babies who don't want things put in their mouths. They have an oral aversion. They don't like things going in their mouths. Does it hurt? Is it raw? Is it? What's your experience? I think it does hurt. Mm -hmm. And parents do say they don't like to do it because it upsets the baby and therefore upsets them. This is the exercises or the procedure? This is the wound. Well, I think both. If we're talking laser phrenotomy, mm -hmm. um, I think it's clear that that it hurts babies um, and if we're talking wound stretching exercises um, parents report that it causes the baby to become upset mm -hmm. and this can be prescribed four times a day or so for, for you know for, for three weeks mm -hmm. um, also of course there's a failure to understand the nature of wound healing happening here because it is true that these surfaces are going to want to heal and scar and move towards opposing again. The idea that we can interfere with that by um, four times a day wound stretching. If you talk to um, someone like Laurie Walsh, who's an expert in terms of oral wound healing, mm -hmm. he would argue there's serious misconceptions here. Mm -hmm. But we do see, of course, that the tissues contract down. This is the nature of mm -hmm. scarring or healing. Yes. And I not uncommonly see quite significant and contracted healing under the tongue. So the idea that we're somehow allowing tongues increased extension and mobility through these deep laser treatments, again, is really of concern. It actually sounds like it might make it worse. I think I think actually that's a risk you're, for some. You're swapping a physiological elastic tissue for a contracted, scarred, not so elastic tissue. Yeah, that's right. But and and upsetting baby. There's also and upsetting mum. The risk of um, cutting the lingual nerve. Okay. Um, and this is something that Nikki Mills raises in, in her mm -hmm. work around the anatomy of um, floor of mouth. Mm -hmm. It does seem that there's a real risk that, that um, these nerves are being severed in our babies and the babies are not going to be able to communicate to us if they have some numbness um, of the tongue. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, there's concerns around oral aversion um, and often these are babies who are already dealing with a conditioned dialing up at the breast so I'll often see little ones with worsened condition dialing up or oral aversion after their, their um, laser phrenotomies. So babies that were already a little bit fussy when they went on the breast, now they're, anything's going near their mouth they're even more worried and upset and fussy mm. and irritable. Mm. That doesn't sound like a recipe for good breastfeeding. Uh, I think it's it's terribly concerning. Yeah. I um, am keen to communicate um, to people about is um, the findings when we, we really look at the ultrasound studies that have been done mm -hmm. um, here in Australia with the Human Lactation Research Group but also internationally. When we look closely at what these studies are showing us, the biomechanical model um, out of which um, these diagnoses of, of posterior tongue tie, mm -hmm. upper lip tie have arisen mm -hmm. as a solution for breastfeeding problems is inaccurate. 
when we look at the ultrasound studies, we see um, a model that we've called in this 2017 paper the Gestalt model mm -hmm. of um, infant suck and swallow and breastfeeding. Um, and it's out of that, that that we've developed the Gestalt breastfeeding approach. 